says, classify each of the following events as examples of Newton's first or Newton's third and defend your answer. Some of these, there may be more than one answer. Number one, a seatbelt restrains a car passenger when the car comes to a sudden stop. What do you think? Sorry? Oh, thought I heard an answer. Newton's first, why? Because the per passenger wants to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. Sure, I'd give you that. Anybody say third? No. When a rifle is fired, the rifle moves back in the opposite direction to that of the bullet. Ah, sure. A car goes into a skid when the driver applies the brakes on an icy road. Sure, the car keeps going at a constant speed. When eating a meal on an airplane, the plane hits an air pocket and drops a few meters very quickly. Your meal ends up in your lap. Yeah, the meal wants to stay where it is. I told you the story of my car accident with the, uh, <coughs> with the ashtray full of change. You can push a small car more easily than a large car. <laughs> Part of this is a good example of Newton's second law because F equals MA. And if you want to have the same acceleration, but you got a bigger mass, it means you better apply a bigger force. I would argue this is also kind of uh, third law. You push against the car. What does the car do against you? Pushes back. And if it's a bigger car, can it exert a bigger force? Yeah. No, you could probably. Did anybody say first? There is an argument to me. Yep. Yeah, I said first because um, like when there's an unbalanced force, then the one car will push it too. So the car wants to stay where it is. Yeah. It wants to remain stopped. I, you know what? I would give you that, too. You can argue it that way. Sure. As you pull backwards on a paddle, the canoe moves forwards. Newton's third. Have you canoed before? Have you ever thought about which way you push with the paddle? You push with the paddle backwards, but which way does the canoe move? So it's not the paddles moving the canoe forwards. What is it? More specific. What's pushing the canoe forwards? Yeah, it's the water. That's why if you put the canoe on a table right now, and we had people sitting in that canoe on this table right now, and we told them to paddle like mad, they wouldn't move forward. If the paddle was what was moving them forward, they would have to move forward. What did we remove from that little equation? Water, right? A car turns its corner rather quickly, and you as a passenger feel pressed against the door. We said that was Newton first. A magician manages to pull it. Michael, which one is uh, this one here? I would agree, too. You were the living demonstration of it. It was wonderful that the water broke afterwards. That was just a glorious, wonderful happenstance. Turn the page. What's the reaction force to the action force in each of the following situations? The football player kicks the football with a force of 500 newtons up. Uh, the football kicks back. 500 newtons down. Okay, it doesn't kick back, but... Any of you have ever kicked a soccer ball wrong, toe punted it accidentally, and suddenly you went, ooh, that really hurts. Yeah, it applies the force back. Oh, got a latecomer. B, a book pushes down on a desk with a force of 25 newtons. Hmm. Oh. What does the desk do? Push back up. with 25 newtons. A crane lifts a steel girder with a force of 6,000 newtons up. What's that girder doing? Pulling down on the crane with 6,000 newtons down. That's why if a crane tries to lift a load heavier than it's weighted for, heavier than it's rated for, the crane will bend because it needs to exert a bigger force than it's capable of. Try that again. Girder. Pulls down. A gun fires a bullet with a force of 1,000 newtons east. Bullet flies force, and I can even tell you, 1,000 newtons west. Earth pulls down on an apple with a force of 10 newtons. Apple pulls back on the earth. <laughs> and 
And that is true, by the way. Whenever the Earth is pulling something down due to gravity, that object is pulling back on the Earth with exactly the same force. Why don't we notice it? Do you guys remember force is what times what? What did we say the, excel the equation was for force? Force is what times what? Remember from last day? Elijah. Mass times acceleration. How big is the mass of the Earth? Huge. So how big an acceleration do you think there really is in this force? It's basically zero. It's there, but it's basically zero. Uh, when you drop a tennis ball, it bounces back up off the ground, explain in detail the force that causes this. So a tennis ball applies a force to the ground. The ground applies a force back to the tennis ball. Now this kind of bugs some people. We're going to talk more about this ground force in a couple of days. But yes, an inanimate object can apply a force. The ground can apply a force. It's applying a force to all of you right now. That's why you're not sinking into the ground. Because gravity is pulling you down. If that was all there was, that would mean you'd be, have to be sinking into the ground like quicksand because we'd have an unbalanced force. There must be a balanced force parry counteracting gravity. Yeah, the ground's pushing back up. Oh, classic movie myth. In the movies, the bad guy is often blasted with a shotgun. It comes time for him to die. Not only that, I've watched movies for some reason. I'm not sure how this works in movies, but... Plate glass windows are like magnetic to bad guys because somehow when it comes time for them to be shot, they have to be standing in front of a plate glass window. When's the last time you saw a bad guy standing in front of a nice brick wall so he just fell backwards against the wall and slumped down? Zach's smiling because he's visualizing about 15 movies where the bad guy, what happens? He gets lifted off of his feet by the shotgun blast? Yes, yes, yes. And flung through the plate gas, glass window? Yes, yes, yes. Why is that garbage? Why is that garbage? Look, if that gun could apply that force to the bad guy, that means that that gun is also applying the same force in the opposite direction. If, if, that, if I could hit you, shoot you with a gun that would lift you off your feet, I would have to go flying backwards in the opposite direction. Do you see the good guy suddenly go flying off of his feet, shooting in the opposite? Not very often. A man wants to test a rope. He ties one end to a telephone pole and the other to a horse, and he makes the horse pull as hard as it can. It's not quite strong enough to break the rope. The man brings a second horse of identical strength to take the place of the telephone pole. Will the rope break when the two horses pull in opposite directions as hard as they can? And convince me. Another latecomer. What do you think? Hakeem, what'd you say? Didn't do it? Okay. Anyone want to take a stab at this? Your hint is, do, do you remember when I had two girls pushing on a bathroom scale and then I replaced one of the girls with a big burly male and we noticed the force didn't go up? Yeah. So if, the ho if horse number one, horse A, can't break the rope, yeah. Two horses can't well, it's not that they cancel each other out, but forces come in pairs. So suppose horse A, the maximum that it can exert is 1,000 newtons, and that doesn't break the rope. Even if horse B, in theory, could exert 2,000 newtons, the fact that horse A can only exert 1,000 newtons means the maximum force you're going to get here is 1,000 newtons, because forces come in pairs. Wow, Cole, I almost forgive you for being late. Almost. Connor, wow, why am I doing that? You know what, I botched your name, and you gave me a good answer. Just this once, I'll let you off the hook. There you go. Who knew it was that easy? I wish I had a name, Mr. Duke. Couldn't remember. Sorry, Zach. Um, any questions on that? That was for your own personal edification. I'm not going to collect it. If you did hand it in, I'm just going to give it back to you in a couple of days. Anyways, we're going to move on. To, if you get today everything that we do for the rest of this unit and everything that we do in forces in physics 12, which is a lot, will make sense.
So turn your brains on. Free body diagrams. Newton's second law is really the main equation for this whole unit. In fact, you're only going to get two equations for this whole unit, unlike the four or five in the last one. What you're going to be doing a lot more here, Sam, is using Newton's laws to figure out what's what. And our big tool is going to be what we call a free body diagram, but let's do a little bit of review. So Newton's second law says F equals MA. Example one, a spacecraft has a mass of that much. Its engine can exert a thrust of that much. At what rate will the spacecraft accelerate? Okay. What do they want me to find in part A? Let's write down A equals question mark. What else have they told me here? I see a mass of 3.25 times 10 to the fourth. And what's the 7.25 times 10 to the fourth? It's a force. How can you tell, what if I hadn't given you that word right there? What if I just said exerts a thrust? How can you tell? No, do you hear that? Even more easy, even, I agree, but there's an easier way than that. What's force measured in? Newtons. Memorize your units. It's really worth it. So I have a force of 7.25 times 10 to the fourth newtons. I'm looking for an equation that has F, A, and M in them. I'm pretty sure it's F equals M, A. But you know what? Since they want me to find A, let's get the A by itself. A equals what? F over M. Sure. It's going to be 7.25 times 10 to the fourth divided by... 3.25 times 10 to the fourth. This is good practice for your scientific notation on your calculator. Bracket, 7.25, scientific notation button to the fourth, divided by 3.25, scientific notation button to the fourth. And I get an acceleration of 2.23 meters per second squared. Yeah? Am I wrong? Yeah? Um, how do you get meters per second squared? Is that you're dividing Newton's by a kilogram? Because a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and you're dividing by a kilogram, and because a Newton is a, right? Right? Great question. By the way, how did I get it? I'm just smart enough to know it's acceleration. It's got to be meters per second squared, unless I really botched something up. Have you heard me go on a rant about why it's worthwhile memorizing units to really cut down on anything? Yeah. And if you haven't had me, you know, and this is your first year, I hate memorizing useless stuff. If I tell you to memorize something, please trust me. The odds are it'll be a minimum effort to memorize it, and you'll be using it time and time and time and time and time again. There's a reason I gave you a formula sheet. I don't want you to memorize all of those. But you know what? You'll probably all memorize F equals MA because you just get tired of looking it up. Uh, what did I say it was? 2.23? B, if the spacecraft maintains this constant acceleration for 24 seconds before turning off the engine and its initial velocity was that much, what will the final velocity of the spacecraft be? All right. What are they asking me to find here? It's a nice review of everything we've done so far this year. Perry, what are they asking me to find here? Oh, let's write that down. What else did this question tell me? Ah, good. What else? Oh, and I have acceleration from the previous question, yes? So I'm looking for an equation that has V final, V initial, T, and A in it. By the way, if you haven't got your formula sheet out, I'm assuming you've memorized all these formulas, or you can just, you know, good habit when we're doing a lesson to have it handy in front of you, at least one per table. Yeah? Oh, and VF is already by itself in that equation, Andrew? Really? Oh, that's nice. Uh, 
uh, VF, sorry, VI, 5.6 times 10 to the third plus A, 2.23 times T, 24. After 24 seconds, how fast are we going? Now, the difference isn't all that noticeable because my initial velocity is so big. I still get, well, I, I guess 5.565. Yeah, I could go, I'll go 5.65 times 10 to the third meters per second. So we did gain some speed. It was 5.6 times 10 to the third. Now it's 5.65 times 10 to the third. So for 24 seconds, we run our rocket engine, and then we flick it off. Oh, how far will we travel during that 24 seconds? What are they asking me to find here? Tanisha, I'm not going to read DFIC because I have everything right in the line above me. But I'm looking for an equation that has distance for sure, and then preferably VI, T, and A, and VF if I have to. I think I got enough now. I can pick a distance equation that actually has d by itself. Yes? Which one? That'll get me there. But I want to avoid using v final just in case I got v final wrong. Is there another one? I'd use that one. d equals vit plus a half at squared which is going to be 5.6 times 10 to the third. There's VI. T, 24, plus a half, 0.5. A, not negative 9.8. This time it's 2.23. T squared. What do you get? Let's see. 5.6, 10 to the third, times 24, plus 0.5, times 2.23, times 24 squared. Do you get 13504, 2.24? No? Yes? Uh, 1.35 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 meters. That's a nice review of last unit. D. So, we thrust for 24 seconds, and then we shut the engine off. What will our velocity be after 48 seconds? Anyone? What? No. Nope. No. Nope. You fell into my trap. We're no longer accelerating, so we've shut our acceleration off at 24 seconds. How does it work in outer space, then? Once you turn your acceleration off in outer space, what does Newton's first law say, hap say happens in outer space? You keep going in a straight line at what kind of a speed? Constant speed. So you know what our speed is? Whatever our V final was at the end of part B, after 48 seconds, we're still going to be traveling 5.65 times 10 to the third meters per second. After 60 seconds in outer space, Elijah, you're still traveling at that speed because there are no other forces acting on you in outer space. After 1,000 seconds, you're still traveling at that speed. If your engine is off, you'll coast forever and ever and ever and ever. And, ever. and this is what we said Newton was so brilliant at. He was able to visualize outer space. See, here on Earth, things come to a stop because there are always dissipative forces acting on them, friction being one of the main ones. But in outer space, it's not the case. 
That's why our uh, Voyager space probes are just about to leave the solar system. We gave them a good kick. We fired the engines for a while, and then we said, go coast. Although I think they are accelerating slightly. I think they have some kind of an ion engine that accelerates them very, very slowly. But when you're accelerating for 25 years, eventually you hit a pretty good speed. Yes? Free body diagrams. This is going to be the best tool I give you all unit. A free body diagram is a diagram. Yo, I figured that out. It, it's a picture. And what it does, you represent the object that you're analyzing, Perry, with a dot to represent all of its mass. And any forces on the object are represented with arrows, roughly to scale if possible. In other words, if you know one force is bigger than another force, draw that arrow bigger than the other arrow. We use Newton's laws to figure out what forces are acting on the object. For example, Example one says, draw a free body diagram for the following masses hanging from a rope. So we have two situations. Let's draw a little line down the middle of the page. Situation number one, I have a 12 kilogram mass hanging from a rope. So you can imagine that big lead ball hanging from the ceiling. What are the forces acting on it? So here's my free body diagram, and you're going to hear me say always, get the obvious one. What are the forces acting on this ball? Get the obvious one. The obvious one. Kilograms is a mass not a force. Gravity is the force. Once you have one force, we start to use Newton's laws. We would say, okay, this object is hanging in midair. Is it accelerating downwards? No. Is it accelerating upwards? then you know what? The forces must be balanced. There must be a force exactly the same size as gravity in the opposite direction. That's what Newton's first law allows us to say. And we're going to give that force a name. And because it's a rope, we have a special force that we say a rope exerts. We're going to call it tension, capital T. That's the free body diagram for anything that's hanging on a rope in midair. As long as you're not swaying from side to side. If you're just hanging there still, that's your free body diagram. That's the free body diagram for a rock climber if they're hanging from a rope. It's a free body diagram from a mass hanging from a rope. Let's let, look at uh, the second one here. What's the difference in this second one? In the second one, it looks like someone's pulling up on the rope because there's an acceleration upwards. See it? Of two meters per second squared. What are the forces? Oh, represent the force with a dot, the mass with a dot. What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious one. What? Gravity. Gravity. Is this falling downwards? No. Is it sitting still? No. Is it accelerating upwards? Sam, that means there must be a bigger force in the opposite direction. I'll draw the arrow longer and exaggerated so I can clearly see. And what force is that? Still the rope. And as a matter of fact, we can calculate how big tension is for both of these. We're going to do that in a second. But first, I need to give you some types of forces. One of the forces that you're most acquainted with is the force of gravity. It's acting on all of you right now. This is the force that the Earth's mass, mass exerts upon you. Force of gravity is calculated as follows. Force equals what times what? What's the only equation I've given you so far? F equals ma. What's the a do to gravity? And in fact, we use a symbol. Do you remember we use the letter G as our symbol for the acceleration due to gravity? You know what the force of gravity is on you, Jake? It's mg, where g is 9.8, and m is your mass in kilograms. In fact, from now on, on my free body diagrams, instead of writing fg, since it's the same number of letters, I'm going to write mg right away and put the equation on there, and that's the mass of gravity. That's the acceleration due to gravity. That's the gravitational force. Another word for gravity 
is weight. Now, I have to be very careful here. We use the word weight wrong in English, William. When I say, what do you weigh? You usually give me an answer in kilograms or pounds, both of which are measures of mass. Weight is not a measure of mass. Weight is a measure of gravitational force. It's measured in newtons, not kilograms. We're sloppy in English. McKenna, we're sloppy in English. For example, let's try an example. Find the weight of a 35 kilogram object A on the Earth. Okay. Weight, what they want is the force of gravity, which is going to be mg. The mass is 35. What's G on the Earth? We're going to ignore the negative. We're just going to say 9.8. What would the weight in Newtons be of this object? Three hundred, three hundred forty-three Newtons. Now compare that with the Moon. See, on the moon, Perry, your mass does not change. You have the same number of atoms and molecules as you had on the Earth. What changes? Your weight changes. Why? Because the gravitational acceleration changes. Why? Well, we'll talk about that in more detail another day. But it's still going to be mg. It's still going to be 35 kilos. But what's the acceleration on the moon? 1.6, the question says. Is this answering your question, Nick? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 35 times 1.6 is going to be 56 even? Units, Newtons. So that's one force, force of gravity. We're very familiar with it. In fact, we don't like it when it's missing. That's what amusement park rides do. We pay money for it. To solve a force equation, turn the page, we're going to use a tug of war analogy. We're going to draw a free body diagram. You may recall on this question right here, Elijah said negative 9.8, and I said, no, just give me the positive. We're going to stop letting down be negative always and letting up be positive always because in a few days, we're going to have a situation like this. In a couple of days, I'm going to give you a situation like this where one thing is moving down and one thing is moving up. Which way is positive? Which way is negative? You know what? It's going to be much more convenient, Dylan, if we ditch the down is negative, up is positive convention. That works great for last unit. We're going to use a tug of war analogy. We're going to draw a free body diagram. We're going to carefully label all of the forces using Newton's laws. We'll reason our way to what all the forces have to be. And then we're going to use our knowledge of physics to decide which force is winning, which is the strongest force. And we're going to let winning be positive. In fact, our equation is going to look like this. Winner minus loser, I don't know why I looked at Connor, uh, equals the net overall unbalanced force. Oh, Zach, where the net force, where that F net, where the net force is always equal to MA. In fact, sometimes you'll see I don't even write F net. I just put MA over on that side. We'll get to that point eventually. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the same tension rope diagram that we looked at earlier, where this rope, this mass, is accelerating upwards. And I said, find what? Find the tension. First thing I'm going to do, free body diagram. Dunk. What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious one. OK? By the way, whenever I say get the obvious one, unless we're in outer space, that's going to be your first response. Gravity. And we just said that gravity was actually 
mg as an equation. Is that okay? Is this mass in free fall? Is it falling down? No. That must mean there's another force in the opposite direction. Is it accelerating upwards or just going up at a constant speed? Since it's accelerating, I know there must be a bigger force in the opposite direction. Yoink. That's tension. Now we're going to come up with an equation. Curtis, my equation is going to look like this. Winner minus loser equals F net. Eventually, we're going to skip this line and go straight to the next line, but in our notes so we know where the heck our, what our thinking is, we'll use this approach. See the two forces in my diagram? Who's winning? How can you tell? Tension is right. How can you tell? Excel, I, I gotta be careful. Not going up, because it was going up at a constant speed. It's a tie. It's accelerating up. So I'm going to, in this question, let up be positive. That means any force pointing up is going to be a winner. Any force pointing down is going to be a loser. And that's going to equal MA. What does question ask me to find? Tension. How would I get the tension by itself? Plus mg to both. Oh, this is kind of nice. Actually, not too bad an equation. Tension is going to be ma plus mg. Let's see if we can fill this all in. Tension equals, do I know the mass? What? 12. Do I know the acceleration? 2. They told me in the, in the diagram. Do I know the mass? 12. Do I know G? Don't say negative anymore. We've taken care of the negative by going winner minus loser. 9.8. What's the tension on this rope? Hundred and forty one point six or hundred and forty two Newtons. Hey, what if the rope was only capable of holding what if you when you took the rope out of the package, it said the rope was only capable of holding 140 newtons. What that would tell you is you can't accelerate this mass up at 2 meters per second squared. You'll snap it. Now, obviously you can because I made the, the question. Compare example 2 with example 3. In example 3, we're lowering this object down. We're, we're lowering the mass. Perry, what does example three want me to find? Read the question. What does example three want me to find? Ready? Yes. Ready? Scene one, act one, take two. What does example three want me to find? Tension. How am I going to start? Free body diagram. Represent the mass with a dot. What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious one. Darn right. Is this object in free fall? No. Newton's first law then tells me there must be an unbalanced force in the opposite direction. What am I going to call that force? Tension. Now, think carefully. Who's winning in this diagram? Gravity or tension? Gravity. So I'm going to draw tension a little shorter, like that. Just to emphasize. Oh, how do I know gravity's winning? My net acceleration is down. My equation is going to start out the same way. It's going to start out as winner minus loser equals net force. You can write that down. You won't in your homework eventually, but we'll put that in our notes as our starting point. Nathan, who did you say is winning? 
mg minus, who'd you say is losing? And f net is always ma. Perry, what did you say we're trying to find? Okay. The best, the easiest, the cleanest way to get tension by itself is going to be plus it to this side, because there's a minus sign right there. But at the same time, Connor, we're going to minus this to that side. Can we do that in one fell swoop? Is that okay? In other words, we're going to get this. Tension equals mg minus ma, I think. Is that okay, Tara? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do I know the mass? Yeah. Do I know g? Yeah. Do I know the mass? Yeah. Do I know a? Yeah. Oh, now it's time to plug and chug. The tension is going to be the mass times 9.8 minus the mass times, what's the acceleration here? 4.2. Mr. Duick, why didn't you put a negative 9 point? And I took care of the negative by going winner minus loser. What's the tension here? Anybody else? Yep. Andrew, which answer was bigger, example two or example three? Which answer had a bigger tension? When are you more likely to snap a rope? When you're accelerating something upwards or when you're accelerating something downwards? Why? Because your equation is that there, whatever acceleration you're doing is being added to gravity, which makes this answer bigger. There, we've just proved why. Example four. Find the tension in the rope if the mass is moving up at a constant speed of 3.8 meters per second. OK. I see a key phrase, and the key phrase is this one here, constant speed. I'm going to underline that. That's one that's been important. I'm going to do a free body diagram. I'm going to represent the mass with a dot. What are the forces acting on this dot? Get the obvious ones. 9.8 is not a force. It's an acceleration. What are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious ones. Mg. That's the force. Is this object in free fall? Nope. OK. That means there's another force in the opposite direction. Which force? Tension. Uh, who's winning? Which arrow should I draw longer? I heard gravity, I heard tension. Well, someone's right, someone's wrong. Tension? tension? You want me to go like that? OK. Why? OK. Can I skip writing winner minus loser? Can we go straight to the equation? Who's winning? Winner. Loser and F net is MA. How would I get tension by itself? Hello? How would I get tension by itself? Yeah. I wouldn't minus MG. Why on earth would I minus MG? I'd like to think I'd plus MG to both sides, math 8. Yes? All right. Do I know the mass? 12. What's A? Now, I've heard people say 0, and I've heard people say 3.8. Why is 3.8 not an acceleration? Constant speed. And what are the units next to the 3.8? Have I gone on a rant lately about why it's useful memorizing un to, to prevent that? In fact, you know what? I can do this. Why can I do that? Because what's the acceleration, Perry? There isn't one. So as a number, how big is that? Zero. So you know what I really get? I get the fact that 
You know how you were saying tension was winning? It's not. It's a tie. Tension is going to be exactly the same size as gravity. If you lift something at a constant speed, if you're not accelerating it, the rope has to be able to hold the mass of the object, the weight of the object, but it doesn't have to be stronger than that. Twelve times nine point eight. Twelve times ten will be one hundred and twenty minus two point four. One hundred and eighteen point no, one hundred and seventeen point six. One hundred and eighteen newtons. What if I'm moving down at a constant speed? I'd probably still think that gravity was a winner because Sam, it was moving down. But you'll notice, even though it was a tie, this method still got us the right answer. Even though we guessed the wrong winner technically, we still got there okay, as long as we're careful, which is why I like this method. Example five. Mr. Duick jumps out of an airplane. Imagine I jumped out of an airplane. Uh, once I pulled my parachute, air drag has a force of 745 newtons. What's my net acceleration? Say what? This is like a job for a free body diagram. Here's Mr. Duick. I jump out of the plane. What are the forces acting on me? Get the obvious one. Am I in free fall? Before I opened my parachute, I was, if I ignored air resistance. Ah, but now they're talking about air resistance. Which way would I point air resistance? Up. Do you think air resistance is winning or losing? Well, when you pull a parachute, do you stay up there forever? Oh, you continue to drift down. Okay, so air resistance is going to be a shorter, and I'm going to call that, how about F air for force of air resistance? There, we made up a new force. Dylan, who'd you say the winner was? So, winner. Minus loser, yes, equals MA. Dylan, what's this question asking me to find? Oh, the A. Folks, how would I get the A by itself? Divide the whole side by M. We're going to get this. A equals MG minus F air, all divided by M. Okay. Mass, 92. G, 9.8. Why not negative? No, no, we took care of the negative. In this unit, we're never going to put in a negative 9.8. William, we've taken care of the negative by going winner minus loser. Minus F air. I don't, oh, they told me it. 745 divided by 92. Do I have more than one number on the top? I better put the top in brackets. Bracket, 92 times 9.8 minus 745, close bracket, divided by 92. I get an acceleration of 1.7 meters per second squared. Pardon me? I just asked you for the net acceleration. I'm not too interested in the direction. And in all honesty, so, so Elijah said, wouldn't it be negative? Actually, in our question, we define down to be positive because it also brings a lot fewer negatives to the table. Are we likely to make dumb mistakes with negatives? Yes. So this also avoids that. Example six, cliff jumping. Any of you go cliff jumping before? Where at? Okay. Where's that? Okay. Good cliffs there? Yeah. Any of you cliff jumping? Same place? Okay. I'll have to check that out sometime. Silver Bridge, any of you? Because that's sort of a cliff. No? That seems to be a tradition here in Pitt Meadows. Okay. Cliff jumping. Regan jumps from a 4.5 meter high cliff into a lake. Assuming his mass is 65 kilograms, A, 
find how long it takes until he hits the water. Okay, what do they ask me to find here? Time. Now we're back into last unit. Let's, let's bring all this in. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Uh, T equals question mark. Okay, what else do we know? Now is defic. Let's list our data. What's the distance? Nope. Nope. Not 4.5. Ah, are we ending up below? Okay, now we're back in last unit. Now we have to be fussy with the vectors, okay? Uh, negative 4.5 meters, because he's ending up below from where he started from. It's a displacement. Uh, what else do we know? I think we know this. What was your VI when you stepped off the cliff? Zero, Zero right? A bit of horizontal, we'll ignore that to make the math easy. Uh, we do know the mass. I don't think we used mass at all last unit to find T, so I'm going to hold off on that. Um, oh! What? And now we're going to include the, no, this is last unit. Yes? We're going to include the negative now. I'm looking for an equation that has T, D, V, I, and A in it. Darn right. And conveniently, VI is zero, so that whole VIT will vanish. In fact, I'll end up with D equals AT squared uh, over two. That's the same as a half AT squared. I'm trying to get the T by itself. I think I would times by two, yes? I think I would divide by A, and then how would I get rid of a squared? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to get, we've seen this one before. T equals 2D over A square root 2 times negative 4.5, negative 9.8. Okay, how long is Regan in the water for? times, Mr. Duick? How about divided by? Square root of that. How much long is he, did I say in the water? How long is he in the air for? 0.958? Almost exactly a second, yeah? No, yes, no, yes. So point, 0.958? Seconds. B, find his velocity after he hits the water. Okay, how about we'll go V final equals V initial plus AT, where V initial is still zero. It's going to be negative 9.8, because he is, I did say find the velocity, and he is heading downwards. So we should get a negative. Uh, 0.958. I'll take this number times negative 9.8. Negative 9.39. meters per second. So that's some review from last unit. Let's start seeing if we can apply some of this unit. Supposing Regan's feet just barely touch the bottom of the pool. Wait a minute, Mr. Duick. I thought he was jumping from a cliff into a lake. Shut up. I turned the page and I forgot I was on a cliff. Suppose they just barely touch the bottom of the lake. And the lake has a depth of 2.5 meters. What's his average acceleration while he's in the water? OK. What are they asking me to find here? Acceleration. Oh, we have a depth of. And I guess I'll call that negative 2.5 because he is ending up below from where he started from in terms of hitting the water and touching the bottom. What else do I know? What's his initial velocity? Negative 
What's the final velocity? I know that too. Because he just barely touched the bottom, which means he basically came to a stop. Is that okay? I'm looking for an equation that has A, D, V, I, and V, F in it. Can you get the A by itself, kiddo? Now, I got to go on a rant. We haven't gone over the last test yet. We will in a couple of days. But I had a whole bunch of people do this. For some reason, they did a square root there. Is there a squared on the A in that equation? Then don't be square rooting. The other common mistake that I saw was this. For some reason, kids just didn't put the squareds on there. And I was, that's not even the equation. Don't do that. It's VF squared minus VI squared all over 2D. VF 0 squared minus VI negative 9.39 squared all over 2 times negative 2.5, 0 squared minus negative 9.39 squared, close, whoop, close off the top, divided by bracket 2 times negative 2.5. I get a positive acceleration, which does make sense. He's slowing down vertically, which means he is accelerating upwards. His velocity is downwards, yes, but the fact that he's slowing down tells you the net acceleration, the net force is upwards while he's in the water. This is what water does to you. And he feels an acceleration of about 2 Gs, 17.63. Meters per second squared. C, what was the net force that the water exerted on him? Okay, what's D asking me? I said C, what's D asking me to find, Sean? This is a job for a free body diagram. I'm going to assume all of you have been underwater. What are the forces acting on Regan? Get the obvious one. Okay, we need to be a little quicker on that one, boys and girls. What are the forces acting on Regan? Get the obvious one. Now, I've already figured out, I've already figured out that there is an unbalanced force in the upwards direction, because that's what C said. I got a positive acceleration. What force is that? What's slowing him down? Sure. How about F, W? Who's winning? How would I get the water by itself? It's going to be, what did I say his mass was? Ah, William, this is why I gave you that mass way back then. What did I say it was, 65? We were able to calculate his acceleration was 17.63 plus 65. Now we're back in the forces unit. We've decided to let up be positive. We, we don't need to worry about putting a negative in for the 9.8. We took care of the negative right there. So just put in the 9.8. What is the net force that the water exerted on Regan? Sorry? 1,782 point? So how about 1,783? Yes? No? 
I'm not getting any response. Better try this myself. You get 1783 point, if I use the actual 17.6344 to my value from the acceleration, do I, I get 17, uh, 1,783 point two. So how about 1,783? Is that okay? Units. Newtons, it's a force. Number seven says, draw a free body diagram for the forces acting on a book sitting on a table. Hey, your binder. What are the forces acting on a binder? Get the obvious one. Is the binder sinking into the table like quicksand? No. Is it flying into the air like Superman? No. You mean it's just standing still? That means the forces are equal and balanced. That, what's, that's what Newton's first law says. Same size arrow. What force? Well, the table. We're going to give that force a special name in a couple of days, but for now we'll just call it the table. Free body diagrams. Very, very useful. We're going to be flogging these to get death. If you're a bit lost, don't freak out. Don't worry. Relax. It's going to come together. Questions for you to try. I think you can try question number one. I think you can try question number two. I'll let you think about question number three. I'll probably talk about it next class. Question number five. Question number seven. Eight and nine.